It's never been an easy job for anyone. Some people would describe it as an impossible job. When TV crews filmed the England team in the qualifying rounds of the 1994 World Cup, Graham Taylor's performance as manager became the centerpiece of a memorable film. If it hadn't been shown, I think very few people would have realised how much I cared. The campaign to qualify was not going well. Despite having won his first 12 matches as manager, Graham Taylor was now viewed as a liability. You've got to be mentally tough in this job. And I can well understand how national managers are brought down. And I don't intend that to happen to me. Who at the FA thought it was a good idea to allow Graham Taylor to talk to anyone in the media? God knows. But to allow full access to a faltering England World Cup campaign, absolutely astonishing. I see too many people going on to television to give an image of themselves, and it's not them. Now, for better or for worse, in that particular environment, at that particular time, that was me. I, I really I loved and admired Graham Taylor. I spent a hell of a lot of time with him. He was a totally genuine bloke. And he never once backed out of anything to do with this film. We are looking for the win, but we're certainly not looking to be beaten. Because then you're even Steve. We've got to go to Norway and, if at all possible, win that game because then we've, we've beat them over our two-game series because we've won and drawn. What we mustn't do against Norway is lose to them. You realise that you are seeing a person pushed to the edge because Graham Taylor always looked so upright. He always wore his blazer, he was very proper, always had a nice clean white shirt. And there he was, swearing like a trooper. In the channel! Fuck it now! With Graham Taylor's agreement to wear a microphone, the documentary offered an unprecedented glimpse into his touchline motivation techniques. Tell him, Les! Fucking Paul, come on! Hey! Initially, you know, I was reluctant to put the mic on. One, because I knew that kind of language was part and parcel of the game. Originally, we had no agreement to put a radio mic on. It was one of those things that I thought I could maybe persuade him to do later, and luckily we did. Oh, fucking hell, we are in trouble. It was promoted on the use of the F word, which apparently it was something like 27 times, if my memory says, that I said, well, over two years, hey, hold on a minute, come on, come on. That's not bad, I don't think. Went to fucking sleep, didn't we? How many? Hey. Hey. Every time he opens his mouth, something extraordinary comes out. What sort of thing is happening here? Can we not knock it? What are they being instructed? But there was one phrase that the nation would never forget. Do I not like that? Do I not like that um, is the catchphrase. I, I don't think that will ever go away. It's, it's entered, uh, you know, the sporting vocabulary. You know, at least it, I seem to have added some kind of phrase to the English language. Crunch time came with the deciding match that England had to win to qualify for the World Cup. A massive attention then came on to the game that really mattered, the one in Rotterdam against uh, Holland. But England lost, and Graham Taylor was out of a job. You see, at the end of the day, I get the sack now. Having been a football manager, wanted to become the England football manager, got right to the top, and then the brick wall hits you, and you don't qualify for it. That's where my hurt was. Do I not like that? 